Brian Little. <laughs> Tell me it. He's senseless. My daughter was 28 years old. Had a whole life in front of her. And I have nothing against the neighbor. I mean, hey, if he sees something going over that house with my daughter, you need to uh, call the police. You know what I'm saying? But it's the way the police acted. You got to know that there's somebody's daughter. Somebody loved her. And it was a better way. It didn't have to be like that. Jefferson thankful for their final words. I texted her, said I love her. And she texted me back. Say I love you too. The two shared a very special bond. When she was growing up, I read to her a lot. I, I bought her a lot of books. Oh, she loved to read. She reads all the time. Her mother tell me she and her read, 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 read. Reading fueled her passion for learning. Hi, my name is Tatiana Jefferson, and I'm doing Lab Exercise 5. Jefferson going on to get a pre-med degree from Xavier University. Currently, she was working in pharmaceutical equipment sales, saving up for medical school. She had hopes. She had dreams. She had aspirations. They've lost it for no reason. I've seen many cases like this where you think that they would have learned from it. I like this Bolton, John, G. uh... I don't want no hug. That's my one and only daughter. I'll never forget this. Now, I wanted to speak about a Tatiana Jefferson. Um, she was shot by a Fort Worth police officer. She was in her home with her eight-year-old nephew, whom she was playing video games with, um, a Tatiana Jefferson is 28 years old. She is a college graduate. Um, she's very intelligent. <laughs> she was a pharmaceutical sales rep and she was saving so she could go to medical school. She was a daughter and an aunt and everyone cared about her, loved her. Um, she was a model stand-up young woman for many to look up to. Um, her father, in the interview, I wanted to show what he said about his daughter in his own words. You know, she was very intelligent, always reading, always learning, and that was her passion. But, you know, this senseless act happen um the neighbor 
saw that her door front door was open um it was late at night and he called the non-emergency police line um he made it clear that this is what he did he didn't call 911 he did not make it look like it was you know a violent situation a break-in situation or anything he just noticed it was strange that she had her door open uh, of course she's a female i mean he did the right thing there are people saying that this man should have minded his business this man um got her killed they are blaming him this neighbor is not to blame he did the right thing he called the non-emergency police line because he was concerned she was a woman who lived alone um, it didn't look like she had a dog or any pets and she was babysitting her nephew at the time I think it's commendable that he noticed that and he took concern because a lot of people will do that they'll mind their own business somebody could be laying down hurt or somebody could be bleeding and those crucial seconds of you calling um, for help could actually save their lives so it's asinine for certain people who are blaming the neighbor and talking about the neighbor it just doesn't make sense people love to blame someone they just have to blame someone and this neighbor is not to blame at all he did the right thing seeing she was a woman who lived alone i would want my neighbor to um do that for me he is not responsible for the insufficiency of the police officer what was supposed to happen was they were supposed to pull up they were supposed to knock on the door they were supposed to announce themselves and do a wellness check just to make sure everything is okay. Make sure nobody is hurt. Make sure nobody's laid out in a medical emergency and make sure some everyone is safe um, while being able to protect themselves. Okay. And people saying that he should have went over to the home. That would be stupid. What if somebody was in there? had killed her harmed her and he's going over there like he's going to do something and then he gets killed then what people will say they will flip it and say oh well he should have minded his own business he shouldn't have went over there without a weapon um he walked right into it so you know you can't win with people <laughs> you you really can't um but from my understanding a wellness check is the police pulling up they may have their sirens on, they may flash their lights, they come up. It's more than just one officer. Knock on the door, announce that they are the police and do a wellness check. Make sure there's no medical emergency, no one's hurt themselves or no one is hurt and no one is in danger. That's my thought on a wellness check in a non-emergency too due to a non-emergency call but they parked all the way down from the home walked to the premises went around the home peeping through windows looking around didn't announce themselves didn't say that they were the police did not even ask if someone was help bleeding on the floor cut themselves or needed any medical attention didn't say anything didn't do anything went around the house looking through the windows i mean i'm sure this woman was nervous and scared nobody has said anything people are tipping and creeping around your house looking in your windows you see the figure of a man holding a gun and she went to go get some protection to protect herself and before the officer could give a command, he shot four seconds in four seconds. All of this went was wrong. It went wrong. Um, all of the police officers involved in going to a Tatiana's house was insufficient and they need to pay for what they did. This was cold blooded murder 
this is not the proper way to conduct a wellness check. There was so many violations of protocol here. And it's just disgusting. And it's always a violation of protocol in black neighborhoods and black areas. And if people think the police don't know the black areas, then you can stay in Candyland all you want to. This is a disgrace. This should have never happened. But again, I said, I know why this happened. I know exactly why this happened. Like I said, the show that was put on with the judge, Tammy Kemp, with the brother, Brent, Jean, all the forgiveness and the hugs, all of the Christians just clapping and evangelicals just praising white Jesus, that there's so much forgiveness going on. And I said in one of my videos, all of this forgiveness from these Christians, no matter the skin color or who they were, because there were black ones, there were white ones, there were um, all different kinds of people. I'm just saying, oh, this is a beautiful Christian thing. They were quoting John 316. They were just up in arms saying how beautiful this was that um the brother was so forgiving and the in the sick jury i couldn't give her 28 years and all of that i said you know somebody else is going to die and the person's blood will be on all of these hands the judge the brother the jury and everyone who thought this was a beautiful symbol of forgiveness. I'm going to need Christians to take a break from church, sit down, dust that Bible off, wipe it down good, because we know there's like a whole inch and a half thick of dust on it because you really don't open it up. You can even get your device, your phone, your tablet, and really sit down and read and really sit down and listen to the scriptures without the preacher and the indoctrination from the slave Bible that's been given, especially in um, the black church. Just take it in for yourself and listen to what forgiveness is, really, what it is, really, because this is not it. Because as, as you can see, the result of all this forgiveness was that Tatiana Jefferson lost her life. The, her blood is on your hands with this forgiveness. And I'm appreciative of her family and her father. And he said he doesn't want a hug. He doesn't, he does not want this fake ass forgiveness. He wants justice for his daughter. And I applaud him for that and his strength and his resolve. And the police officer was arrested on murder charges, but he did bond out on $200,000 bonds. But the police aren't paid much and they're under so much stress. And, you know, I'm, <laughs> I really can't. And it is said that in term for Worth police chief is taking this seriously and he has asked the FBI to look into the shooting for possible civil rights violations. And as the time goes on and they drag this out, I will be keeping an eye on this case just like I, I waited for Botham John's case to complete, take a look at everything, assess everything. I will do the same thing with this case here. There are so many things that can happen that can mess up a case and cause a person to get justice. And like I said, I would not be surprised if, you know, there's no justice in this case or it is not sufficient enough for the crime committed because with everything that he did, this this didn't have to happen. This young woman did not have to lose her life. And now her eight-year-old nephew will have that image in his mind. And I'm sure 
that he's going to have mental issues because of this. He saw his aunt murdered in front of him. So not only did this take the life of an innocent woman, now a child is scarred. And when I did first see the video, um, they said this isn't even the full video from the body camera of the officer. And at the end of the video, they showed the gun. And you know, all of us understood what that was. It's a dog whistle. It's no different than in Botham John's case where they said he was smoking marijuana or he had marijuana in his home meant nothing to this case. And the gun in Texas, you can have a gun. <laughs> you have the right to have a gun. It's almost saying, you know, black people don't have the right to have a firearm or the officer thought he was in danger because he saw a gun, which he himself could have prevented had he followed proper po protocol in making a wellness check. This would have never happened. So he caused all these events and then took a girl's life, scarred a young little boy. And we'll see what the trolls what they have to say about this case and what excuse they can make up for this because there's no excuse for this. People are trying to bring up the gun like that means anything now. Um, the eight-year-old nephew has spoken out and said that his auntie took the handgun from her purse and pointed it at the window and then that's when she was shot which is understandable <laughs> because he did say that she heard noises coming from outside and I'm sure she saw the figure of a man with a gun and she didn't know who this was prowling outside of her house and she's trying to protect her nephew and her life. So she got her handgun, which she has every right to have, pointed it at the window, which she had every right to do, and she was shot by the police. There is no justification for this because she was in the right. The gun means nothing. There was no excuse for him to murder her. He was the reason why these events happened. And I wanted to reference the Castle Doctrine um, and the Stand Your Ground Law. The Castle Doctrine and Stand Your Ground laws are affirmative defenses for individuals charged with criminal homicide. The Castle Doctrine is a common law doctrine stating that an individual has no duty to retreat when in his or her home or castle and may use reasonable force including deadly force to defend his or her property, persons or other. However, an individual has a duty to retreat if able to do so before using reasonable force. Stand your ground laws by comparison remove the common law requirement to retreat outside of one's castle, allowing an individual to use force in self-defense when there is a reasonable belief of a threat. Deadly force is reasonable under stand your ground law in certain circumstances, such as immediate great bodily harm or death. And with this, this would fall into great bodily harm or death. And this would also fall into where you can't retreat because there's literally someone outside of your home with a deadly weapon pointed and they're looking in your window and that is a threat period but I just wanted to speak on this because I am so sad and so sorry for the family and I hope they can get through this this was his only daughter um, she was an amazing person an amazing aunt amazing daughter but I saw this coming and it's so sad that this innocent young woman had her life taken because of the forgiveness and the coddling that we do 
when things are done wrong and we don't even stand up for our loved ones and ourselves and our own lives. And I just, I saw this coming and I'm so sorry for this family. And I'm so glad that this family does not have that same view as some members of the Botham Jean family. Because this is just out of control. It's unacceptable and it needs to stop. And the police may be laughing and thinking, you know, they're getting away with this and that it's funny and people who walk the blue line. But I mean, there are going to be consequences and repercussions for this happening. Um, not everybody is the type to forgive. Not everybody is the type to hold your hand. And this could cause some issues with police officers all around this country. But I'll go ahead and leave it right here. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.